Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Alpha Ambassador, and in this series of short video tutorials, we're going to deep dive into Sony's new menus that we see on cameras such as the A7 IV and the Alpha One. So without much further ado, let's get started. Let's take a look at the flash settings on late model cameras such as the Alpha One and the Alpha 7 IV cameras. Okay, so we're going to go into the flash menu. You'll find that on page four of the exposure color uh, tab there and we'll come in and start looking at the options that we have first of all flash mode that is usually set to fill flash we do have the option to go to slow or rear now slow will just um, allow the um, uh, the shutter speed to slow down to capture the ambient uh, exposure complete with any movement blur that we might encounter by having such a slow shutter speed in low ambient light. The rear curtain um, slow sync is when we want the uh, the flash to go off at the end of the exposure. This makes sure that if we have any movement blur it is always uh, trailing the subject in the right direction um, rather than in front of that moving subject. Basically fill flash will be your standard setting. Now we'll come down to flash compensation. I actually never use flash compensation on the camera. When I am using flash compensation, I always apply it to the flash unit itself. Now you'll use flash compensation in the same way as you nor use normal exposure compensation, i.e. a very um, light colored subject might underexpose because the camera thinks it's too bright. So you'll put, use a positive um, flash compensation and uh, the opposite is true. If you have a very dark tone subject there is a risk that you'll uh, overexpose using the flash so we'll use a negative flash compensation okay so the exposure compensation settings will appear on the monitor and in the viewfinder and generally if you're not using the flash compensation on the camera you could leave that at to set to ambient only then we go to wireless flash if you're not using a flash off camera that can be set to off and that needs to be set to off if you're going to access the next uh, function which is red eye reduction if you've got a camera on uh, sorry a flash on top of the camera there is always the risk of red eye in very low ambient light conditions so having that uh, red eye reduction on the camera will fire a number of flashes just to reduce the size of the pupil before the main flash fires you could of course always leave red eye reduction off and then just fix red eye in post-production and sometimes that's preferable rather than repeatedly flashing your subject indoors next we have the external flash settings now these options may be grayed out if you're not using a sony branded late model flash unit but if you are the good news is you'll be able to access all of the flash settings from the monitor and the finder okay so first of all let's take a look at some of the late model flash sony gear so we got the wireless radio commander that's useful for firing remote flashes we also have the smallest um, sony rm flash um, which is the uh, hvl f28 rm then we next one up is the hvl f45 rm what you're really looking for is those last two letters of the model numbers the RM flashes is what you're looking for there is a new 46 RM and then there's two versions of the 60 RM the mark 1 and mark 2 and those are the ones you want to be using if you want to use the external flash settings external flash firing setting if you're um, using the flash on top of the camera most of the time when we're outdoors and we just want to uh, do a little bit of fill flash to lighten very dark shadows cast by sunlight we will set um, the flash control mode to TTL it's a bit like using auto exposure on the camera we won't have to um, adjust the power of the flash it'll basically do it for us just remember you may have to use a little bit of flash compensation if you've got a very light tone subject or a very dark tone subject okay so the sort of fill flash that you might be looking for is this type of thing where I'm out on a very sunny day there is some harsh sunlight she's actually got her back to the direction of the sunlight so her face would be much darker than this had I not fired a fill flash at one quarter power 
Okay, so the next uh, setting when you're going into those external flash firing setting is um, on the 45, 46 and 60 RM flashes, there is the possibility of zooming the flash as you zoom a lens. So you can narrow the flash so it will travel just a little bit further. That is not an option with the 28 RM there. When we're working outdoors, we also want HSS, high speed sync, set to on, because we're going to be using um, shutter speeds usually faster than 1 250th of a second if we're using wide aperture primes or just f2.8, that sort of thing, outdoors. Next thing is, is the flash compensation. If you're just using flash as a fill light, not the primary light, you do want to start with a minus value here. Now you probably start with minus one. If you want an even more subtle effect like I was showing you earlier with that outdoor scene, you could start with minus two stops. So you're basically um, um, having the flash only a quarter of the power of the sunlight that is working and that is quite subtle for fill flash. If the, if the flash is off camera we need to set the wireless flash menu setting to on and you can see that red eye reduction there below is now greyed out because that is not an option for off camera flash and the chances of getting a red eye with off camera flash is very very um, small. So let's take a look at um, the commanders that will trigger or be used to tell the off camera flash to fire. Now you can use the wireless radio commander that's the FA-WRC1M but you could also just use the Sony HVL F28 RM or any other RM flash and to be honest the uh, that is better value for money purchasing that F28 RM it can be used as a small fill flash outdoors but it can also be used as a commander to trigger and control other off-camera flash units. So one thing you're going to have to do once you've got multiple units, whether it's a commander or multiple flashes, you're going to have to pair them so they can talk to each other. Now pairing the devices is done on the device itself. You'll go into the menus of the F45 and 60 and 46 RM flashes and go into the pairing option and then just follow the directions. With the little Sony HVL F28 RM there is no LCD window to use so you'll you actually have a pairing button that you'll probably have to hold down for a number of seconds to go into pairing mode. Once you've done that we can just check which um, uh, units are paired by going to the external flash settings menu then going to external flash custom settings we can go in just remember with each of these little tabs you're looking at now there may be multiple pages so I'm actually on the second page of that second tab and it says display paired devices so if I want to look at the um, uh, all of the devices that will receive the signal from the commander I can see that I have uh, the F45 will receive the signal the F28 RM and I've also got a, a, a receiver for a non RM flash you can buy those receivers and just mount a non RM flash on that if you want to trigger an older flash so you don't have to basically replace your non RM flashes with RM flashes the RM flashes just have the um, the wireless uh, uh, receivers and, and signals built into the flash units themselves Let's go back to the ex external flash firing settings. This is where we can come in. Now all of these settings you can access on the F45, 46 and 60 RM flashes but of course it's all so much bigger on the back of the monitor and so this is a, a more useful way to control those external flash units and remember it is for the Sony flash units we're doing now. So if we've got um, an external flash we probably want to use TTL again we will uh, often want um, to use the auto zoom. Um, we're basically working with uh, the unit that's on top of the camera in command mode. We're going to leave high speed sync on, especially if we're working outdoors where the ambient light is likely to be bright. This one is showing is the flash that's mounted on the top of the camera. Do you want that flash to fire or just act as a commander? Because we can actually switch the flash on the top of the camera off so it only acts as a commander, not as a flash as well. 
we want to go down to the radio control and switch it to on and then we want to control the ratio of the flashes now the A channel is usually by default the on camera flash so I'm not having that as the most powerful flash here I'm setting that as um, 1 8 power compared to B which will be my main off camera flash probably going through a lighting modifier such as a softbox or beauty dish. I might have a, a second off camera flash in the C channel which will be my effects light. Maybe it's a hair light or a rim light or a light going on to the background and that will be fired off at I'm going to say quarter power but obviously uh, working these lighting ratios is part of the creative um, skills of working with multiple off camera flashes. So this is just an example, 1 8 power to act as a sort of a catch light with the flash on the top of the camera. My main um, uh, flash is going through channel B and my effects flash is going through channel C. So again, let's go back to the uh, on camera flash. Now I can disable that here. I can switch it to off and you can see the little lighting symbol coming from the front of that unit is no longer visible. We could also have a go to the A channel, which is my on camera flash and then just set that to off. Now you'll see the on camera flash icon above it uh, grayed out showing that that is also disabled. So sometimes um, setting the A channel to off is just a little bit more reassurance of what we're actually doing here. There is a, an alternative to TTL and that is to go into manual flash firing. Now manual flash firing is usually uh, appropriate when the subject is always going to be at a fixed distance from the flash units. Otherwise if the, uh, um, the subject gets closer or further away the exposure will keep on changing and that's where TTL has its advantage because it will automatically increase or decrease the power depending on the distance of the subject. But again if you're working with a fixed distance you won't have to do flash compensation if the subject has a light tone or a dark tone. You'll just work on the set exposure. Now I'm working again with the on-camera flash set to off. My main flash will be set to half power. We're not working with ratios anymore and I never really want my main flash to be firing off at full power because the recycling time would just be a little bit longer. I would prefer to raise the ISO a little bit and then set the, um, the main flash to half power so it will recycle much faster. And now we're going to set the um, C channel to 1 8 power. Again that's a 1 for lighting ratio between the main flash on channel B and the secondary flash on channel C. Okay, so let's go back to the TTL mode. If you've set up your TTL mode uh, settings and then you want to memorize that, the flash units, the late models um, flash units have a memory feature. So we would go to the external flash custom settings we would come down to the memory which is on the first page of the first tab we would go in and then set um, a memory either MR1 or MR2 and then register that setting so now when we come back maybe it's several weeks later and we're trying to remember our um, flash settings we don't need to trust to our memory we can just simply uh, dial in MR1 and that will recall all of the settings that we set up uh, on that um, uh, uh, ratio flash units. Okay so I have a YouTube movie uh, that outlines a Sony flash workflow on location using uh, HVL-F45RM and also that wireless radio commander and also a, a second non-RM flash um, working off a receiver so you'll find that on my YouTube channel not quite done with the menu settings here. Now if you do go into a studio and you're working with flash um, generally the uh, setting effect on the live view display uh, doesn't know that a flash is about to fire so what you'll be looking at is a very dark studio. The modeling lights might not be bright enough uh, to show uh, the, su the subject as it will be exposed. So in order to when you're working in a studio with flash where flash is the primary light source you really need to go in, into that setting effect and turn the setting effect 
to off? This is a, a very popular um, question and answer on many forums is people go into studios with mirrorless cameras for the very first time and they don't work like DSLRs. They're working through their closed aperture uh, and what you'll often see in a dark studio is nothing at all. So you do have to go into the live view display and turn the setting effect to off. You'll find this in the red shooting menu page 10, shooting display. You'll go over to the live view display settings and then there's your, your setting effect on which is great. It's one of the great advantages of having a mirrorless camera is previewing the ambient exposure. But of course this doesn't work in a studio where flash is the primary light source. If you go down a menu, let's just, well first we'll just look at the setting effect off if you want to set that off for studio. If we go down a second menu there you'll see the exposure effect when it's on. We have two choices here. We can have exposure ambient only or exposure set and flash. This will often give a slightly brighter view of a, a darker studio without turning the second setting effect to off but I would actually just prefer to turn the setting effect to off because you only get a little bit of assistance from this second line item here. Okay, so there, there's the exposure setting only and that might be a preferred option if you're trying to gauge the ambient exposure. You don't want it lifted slightly um, so you can see your subject more easily. Okay, there are a couple of other things that you might want to do is, and that is to go into the um, customize um, setup and um, assign a couple of um, custom keys if you are working in a uh, studio with flash as the primary light source um, a, a lot. One of the uh, two most uh, useful items to assign to custom keys for a studio user is aperture preview. This um, allows you to see a depth of field preview but with the ambient exposure, uh, well basically you can see your subject very brightly lit uh, with the setting effect off but you will get a depth of field preview by pressing down a custom key and looking at the aperture preview. It's really probably be more appropriately called depth of field preview there. The second one is called shot result preview and this gives you an idea of how much the ambient light is contributing um, to your scene when you can't actually see um, that because the setting effect has been turned to off. If you found this information useful, head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. I'm offering an alpha creative skills support channel where you can download a 500 page camera specific ebook and I've covered most of the late model alpha cameras. You'll also be able to download a cam set file if you own one of the later model alphas. You'll be able to set up your entire camera with just a single file copied to a memory card. I also offer additional uh, ebooks for people to download to help them master the uh, skills of creative photography and also a range of uh, one hour seminars that look at the uh, using the, uh, the camera gear to the best effect and also to build up your skills of photography in general. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor.